Thank you for watching this video on placing a Minnesota tube. Here is the outline and feel free to skip to whichever section you find most relevant. Hi, today I want to talk to you a little bit about placing a Minnesota tube. This is not something that happens all that often, but what it is, it's probably best for everyone involved to know how it works. First, the indication for putting a Minnesota tube is variceal bleeding that fails endoscopy or someone who's bleeding so much you don't think they'll be able to make it to endoscopy. However, it's a very important to note that the Minnesota tube is a bridge to tips. It is not definitive therapy. It is a way to stabilize the patient while IR is getting ready to decompress the, the portal system. For those who are GI fellows, we have at San Francisco General um, Hospital the instructions on our bleeder cart. For those in other departments, you can ask the GI fellow to make a copy for you as well, which explains um, what the um, uh, procedure and protocol for placing the, the Minnesota tube. I'll talk about the specific pieces of what's in the Minnesota tube. This is a Minnesota tube. You can see it's large and a red with two balloons, an esophageal balloon and a gastric balloon. Um, at the top, there are the aspirates. You can see that it is written on it, esophageal aspirate, gastric aspirate, and then the balloons, esophagus balloon, and stomach balloon. It's important to note um, which one you're actually using because it's, uh, that is part of the process of placing it. In addition, you will need a large syringe with this type of tip. The lure lock or slip tip are not appropriate for the Minnesota tube. Also helpful is a Kelly clamp um, to help prevent air leakage. Um, you can ask uh, respiratory therapy for a Y clamp, which will help with the aspiration when you get to that point. In addition, not shown here, lubricant, because as you see, quite large and will be difficult to put down. Uh, before you place it, it's important to check to make sure that uh, you can inflate the balloon. Um, I am going to do the stomach balloon first, which is this lower one. Um, with this inserted, making sure that the other side is closed, insert air, and you can see and hear that air went through, and also repeat this with the esophageal balloon to make sure that the tube is working. Before placement though, it is very important to withdraw all air um, to, to, uh, so that it will go down more easily. Placement of the Minnesota tube is just like placing a nasogastric tube, it, except it's much larger. Remember to lube everything up significantly, especially the balloons, since these are the largest part of the, um, the tube, um, and make sure that these are completely deflated before placing. When placing, in our model, place the tube all the way through the esophagus. Here I will cheat and pull through what will be the stomach side. The tube has a marker of 50 centimeters and make sure that you insert all the way down to the, this point. Once it is inserted to the 50 centimeter mark, um, this is time to check uh, the placement. Make sure that you are at the stomach balloon and not the esophageal balloon. Pull out to 50 cc's on your syringe and insert into, um, into the port. Inject air into the port and ascultate over the stomach to make sure you hear sounds. In, uh, at this point, only inject 100 cc's of air. This cc syringe is about 60, so in between uh, placement of air, remember to Kelly clamp the port so that when you release the, um, the syringe, you do not lose air that you placed. Continue, uh, replace the tube, release the Kelly clamp, and insert air again with auscultation to make sure that you're in the stomach. Once you have uh, placed 100 cc's of air into the gastric balloon, um, call for a stat chest x-ray to make sure that, to, for confirmation that the um, balloon is inflated in the stomach and not in the esophagus. After you have made sure that the gastric balloon is inflated in the stomach, it's time to proceed to fill it to its capacity. Um, you should uh, inject another 300 cc's of air, um, which will bring the total of volume of about 400 cc's of air into the balloon. Remember to Kelly clamp the port between every injection of air, release when you inject the air, clamp, remove the syringe, 
fill the syringe with air, replace into port, release the Kelly clamp, and inject. This is roughly what 400 cc's of air in the gastric balloon um, appears to be. Once you have 400 cc's of air in the gastric balloon, it's time to actually use the balloon for tamponade. Pull the balloon back until you feel tension, and you want to attach it to about one, kilo, one kilogram of pressure, which is uh, approximately uh, the weight of a sailing bag. Attach the end of the um, Minnesota tube to a sailing bag and put it over a Hoyer lift or um, a IV pole in some way to keep this balloon under tension and tamponading the GE junction. The gastric balloon works not just for gastric varices, but also esophageal varices by applying pressure to the GE junction where the blood flow from the varices um, is entering the esophagus. Under this tension, ideally, the balloon will apply enough pressure to prevent blood flow from entering both gastric and esophageal varices and stopping the bleeding, allowing you to stabilize the patient and bring them to, um, to IR for a definitive TIPS therapy. This is an example of tying the Minnesota tube to a bag of saline, and this is what a football helmet to attach for tension would look like. With the balloon under tension, it's now time to connect these two ports, the esophageal port and the gastric port, to suction to see how well the balloon is doing its job. While under pressure um, and under wall suction, um, you, you need to evaluate whether blood is coming from the stomach ports or from the esophageal ports. If blood continues to come from the esophageal ports, um, it's, this is the only time in which it is necessary to consider in, inflating the esophageal balloon. The esophageal balloon, uh, because of the wall thinness of the esophagus, is at much higher risk for causing necrosis and um, perforation of the esophagus, and therefore um, should only be up for small amounts, uh, small amount of time, um, if only necessary, and only if there is blood coming from the esophageal uh, aspiration port. If putting it up, um, you should do this to a goal of 30 to 45 milligrams of mercury. Um, so you'll need a transducer, which is why there are two ports attached to each balloon. One port is for putting air in, and the other one is for measuring um, the amount of pressure of that balloon. Um, if you do this, then the esophageal balloon should be put down every six hours um, for about five minutes to reduce the risk of um, necrosis and perforation. However, again, this is a bridge to tip placement by IR. Ideally, after placement and putting it under traction, um, the patient has been able to be transferred to IR for TIPS placement. Um, however, overall, because of the risk of necrosis and ischemia, the uh, Minnesota tube should ideally not be in place for more than 24 hours. Remember, it is only a bridge to interventional radiology. It is not definitive therapy. So now we need to talk about taking out um, the Minnesota tube. Hopefully the tips has been placed, the gradient, um, uh, the portal systemic gradient has gone down due to tips placement and the root risk of bleeding is now taken care of. So we now have right here our gastric port under the Kelly clamp. Release the Kelly clamp, but as you see the balloon is still inflated. Insert your syringe and continue to suction out all the air until you are able to feel like you are pulling uh, an empty uh, balloon, which you can see is happening right here. Now, I feel that there's tension um, when pulling back. I know that the balloon is empty. However, sometimes um, you will feel like you still cannot pull the balloon out of the esophagus. If that's the case, use a scissor and cut across this, which will reduce the resistance. Once the air is taken out, 
remove the tube just as you would a nasogastric tube and, um, um, and throw away. Um, I hope that this has been helpful and if there are any questions, please call um, the GI fellow on call. Thank you for watching this movie. Here is a example of the protocol found on the GI cart. I want to thank everyone for watching and thank you Dan Selvig for helping me with this video.